The last couple of tutorials have dealt with the Fetch API. However, we have not discussed error conditions. And so in this tutorial, we will look at how to handle an HTTP request that doesn't work. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. In our multiple tutorials on promises, I discussed how you handle errors. If you remember from those tutorials, we can provide a reject function that is invoked when there is an error. Or a more efficient way is to provide a catch construct at the end. However, fetch doesn't return an error condition with a failed HTTP request, and therein lies the problem. Let's take a look at that first and then see how we can work with it. Now here is the code from the last tutorial that I did. We're basically using fetch to open a JSON file and access the data within that JSON file. We set up an init object and we use that init object to create a request object and then we used fetch with that request object. And here is our fetch statement down here. Now let's go ahead and change this JSON file name just slightly and that's going to cause it to not to find it. And so what's what's going to happen when that when that occurs? Well, let me do a few changes here so we can watch what happens. So I'm going to enter a console log statement here. Just put in works. If it gets there, we'll indicate that works. And then I'll we'll console log the response. And then down here, we're going to add a catch construct that hopefully will grab the error. We pass in a function, capture the error that comes in if it gets to this. And then let's just log to the console the word error just so we know that it's in this portion of the code. And then also log the error itself like that. All right, now I want to comment out this portion here. Just want to deal with simp deal with this simply. Basically, we have the initial then, but we have an invalid JSON name, and so it shouldn't find it. So the thinking is it should show up down here. It should invoke these console log statements. Well, let's see what happens. Let me save that. And we'll jump out and refresh. I'm going to open the console here. Well, it works in giving me an error when I have my promises not structured correctly. So let me put that dot there. Save it again. Let's try this one more time. Now notice that it went to the console log statement that puts out works. So basically, it ended up in here. It did this code. So that's not what we would expect. We would expect if it can't find the URL that it should come down here, but that's not what happened. So how do we work around this? Well, I want to show you the response object that we received when this didn't work, and that can give us a clue as to how we work around this. So if I open this up, this response object, this is what was returned. It basically shows the URL and it has a lot of other data that came with it. Now one of the things I want to point out here is that there is an OK property. And notice it's set to false. That means that it was not handled pro correctly. That the response object is not OK. So we can use that to determine if there is a problem. Also we have a status here and it's giving us a 404 indicating that it could not find the page we were looking for or in this case the JSON file. All right, so let's use that information to change or to fix this problem that we're dealing with. So first off up here in my first then statement, let me put an if statement. I want to check the response object 
So if the OK property of the response object, if that's false, then what are we going to do? Well, at that point, we want to throw an error. Because if we throw an error, then that will cause it to error out like we want it to. So I'm going to throw an error. And the error I'm going to pass is the response status text. Remember, we looked at that a bit. If I jump out here, you can see what that is. Simply says not found. There's not a whole lot of information, but, but it does give us an indication that the URL was not found. I also want to copy or pass in the URL. I think that would be good to display as a part of that error. So I'm going to concatenate that to the URL like this. So there we are throwing that error. Now let me go ahead and put the rest of this back to the way it was. So let me comment out these log statements here. And I need to uncomment this return statement because this is where we convert it to JSON. And then obviously we need this then here so we can handle that JSON data and display the students. That's what we're doing. We just do a final log of those students. So let's see how this works. We still have an incorrect, an incorrect file name. So I haven't corrected that yet. But let's save this. Let me jump out and refresh. Every time I change this, I keep getting periods in the wrong place. Let me save that again. And here we go. Now it displays an error. We actually get an error. Instead of trying to do this, which is what it would try to do, it would try to do this JSON, and then it would end up getting this as well. Instead of trying to do that, it displays the error. And we can see that not found, and then it shows us the URL, and we can see, oh, maybe I have the wrong URL here. Now, if we correct that, if we put in the correct file name and refresh, then we can see it works. We're able to get the names from that JSON file. So that's how you would handle it using the OK property of the response object. Now, in this blog, I really like the pattern that he indicates for handling this. And so I'm going to show you that pattern next. Now, I'll also include a link to this article if you'd like to view it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function up here. And this function will always be called whenever I do an HTTP request with fetch. I'll just call this function and the purpose of this function is to is to check and make sure the HTTP request was successful. So I'm going to call it check fetch. And I'm going to pass in the response object and by passing that into this function I'll be able to check it. And so then we simply do the same thing we were doing earlier, where if response.ok, if it's not OK, then what do we do? We throw this error. I'm going to copy that and paste that in. I do need to change RS, RESP to response, like that. And then down here, if it's successful, if we don't have to throw the error, we're simply going to return the response. Like that. OK, so this function will allow us to check. We can use this function for any fetch statement that we do. So I like the fact that it's set up to be reusable. And that's why I like this particular pattern. So how do we now include this check function as a part of this fetch statement here? So the way we do that is the very first then, we simply call check fetch. That's all we do. 
if it's successful, it will return a response and then we'll be able to pick it up with this then. So now I can remove all of this that is here. I still have my catch construct down here, which is important. I'm going to be consistent here with the way I'm doing these. So the way this works is when the response is returned, fetch returns a promise. So the first then is invoked, we call this function that we've set up up here. Now remember with any then, we can pass in a function. And so that's really what we're doing here is we're passing in a function. In these other situations, we've passed in anonymous functions. In this case, we had set the function up previously and so we can pass it in by including that variable. And so we pass in the function. It checks and if it's not okay, it throws an error, which will cause this portion to be invoked. If it is okay, then it returns a response and then things continue as they did before. All right, so we have the correct URL. Let's go ahead and see how it works if it's functioning properly. So jump back here, refresh, and we're getting exact same information. So that's working for us. Now let me jump back in, make a change to the URL so it's wrong, so it's not going to find it. Refresh, and we get the error that we had set up before. And so now we've set up a function that we can use anytime we're doing a HTTP request with fetch. And that seems to be a great pattern for handling this type of thing. And so that's why I wanted to end with that. Now, before we're done here, please hit the like button. It can help others find this tutorial. Also hit the bell button to be notified about new tutorials. And if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website allthingsjavascript.com for full courses and a complete list of tutorials. Thanks for watching.